Hello everyone, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with four more Christmas gift DIYs. These are a little more involved than last week's, but can still be made with just a few items that are pretty easy to find. Here we go. Gift number one can be made with this wooden bead brain teaser game and some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. We're also going to use Gorilla Wood Glue. So this is a decor item that could be made for yourself or given as a gift. So I wasn't sure what to expect when I opened this package, but it is like one of those snake, um, I would almost call it like a fidget toy because I don't really think you can do much with it, but it has these two different colors of squarish dice type wood beads. And it had about, I think it was 27 beads. So once you snip the elastic, they all come off. And you can see here, there's just a few more of the darker ones than the white ones. So I'm going to also be using tumbling tower blocks for this. And my idea is to create like a lantern that could be used with candles as a centerpiece. So here I'm just kind of counting out how many tumbling tower blocks I need to make a square base. And I ended up using 27. I made three rows of nine. Here I have eight in each row and it's still a little rectangular. So I added one more and this gives me a base of roughly eight inches square. So here's kind of my plan of the pieces I'm going to use. So back to the base, I'm going to take my Gorilla Wood Glue and I'm going to go ahead and glue my three rows of nine together to make my base. Sometimes I had to swap out a block because they're not all exactly the same height or length. So once I had my base pieces drying, now I'm going to make 12 of these, I'll just call them sticks, that are three blocks long. So this time I'm using my glue to glue them end to end. So I will make, like I said, 12 sets of three in long lines like this, and then let those completely dry as well. Now, because these cubes were on a string, they do have holes in them. I decided, because I wanted to be able to give this as a gift, to use some wood filler. You could use the spackle from Dollar Tree and just fill those holes as best I could to make it look like all of the sides were completely flat. So I am going to use 28 of those wood beads. So I filled all those holes. Now when my three rows of blocks for my base are dry, I'm going to now glue those three rows together to complete the base for my project. And to make sure it's flat, I'm gonna put a gallon of paint on it. So now I have all my base, my 12 sticks, and my 28 beads. I'm going to give all of it a light coat of my Waverly chalk paint in white. Of course, you can make this project whatever color scheme you want. You could leave it just the plain wood, um, except for the beads you might want to paint just because of the wood filler. But I did also give all these pieces a light sanding just to smooth them out. Once everything is painted, next I'm going to take my wood beads and I'm going to glue two of them together. I'm gonna to do this to make 12 pairs that I'm going to use to build this lantern. And now that those are dry, we will start building our lantern. So my idea here is to use the pairs of beads to go up, to build our lantern up. And then I'm going to use four of these sticks that we made glued together in a square 
to be like the level. So if you think of this like building a building, we're gonna do two beads high and then a square of tumbling tower blocks. And we're going to do that three times. So two beads, a square of tumbling tower blocks, two beads, a square of tumbling tower blocks, two more beads, and then the last square of tumbling tower blocks. Now making it this way, the top will not be completely flat. You'll see that the top and bottom lines of tumbling tower blocks are on top of the two side ones. So it will um, be a little bit raised, but we're going to just do this three times and then we'll see how our final project looks. And here's what it looks like with all the layers on. Now this step is optional. If you want to leave the base flat on the table, you can. If you want it raised up just a little bit, you can go ahead and add one more bead to the corner, to each corner of the base. Now all you need is a glass candle holder and a candle from Dollar Tree and this makes a really, I think, unique looking candle holder centerpiece made with just a couple of items from Dollar Tree. You can take some of the green garland and some of the berry garland around the base and this would make a beautiful gift maybe for a hostess if you were going to a party or just for anyone that you want to make something for. Gift number two, I'm also using tumbling tower blocks and one of our calendars from Dollar Tree, some magnets and some Mod Podge. So on the back of these calendars, even though inside they have beautiful images, on the back they have a small version of each month's graphic. So I'm just showing you some examples here. And I've seen other, um, awesome calendars at, you know, Walmart or Dollar General, but I'm just going to make a set of magnets with these small images. So I cut out those 12 images and the size of them is just slightly larger than three tumbling tower blocks put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make 12 sets of three and just glue those together lightly with my Gorilla Wood Glue. And then once those are dry, we're going to Mod Podge those 12 small images from the calendar to the front. I did decide to go ahead and just leave the wood the natural color because you're really not going to see it once you have the image Mod Podged to the top. So just putting some Mod Podge, putting the image on, and then I did kind of flip it over so I could press down really well and center the blocks on the image. Once those are dry, we'll take a knife and go ahead and trim away the excess of the paper. And that's what I'm doing here with this fingertip cutting knife from Fiskars. This thing is awesome because you just kind of, it's almost like you're cutting it with your finger um, the way this fits. So I'll make sure I link this in the description box below, but that just cleans up the edges and makes them all nice and square. And here you can see what they look like. So the last step for this is to glue a magnet to the back. I have some of these flat silver ones. They're called like neodymium or something like that. I will link them. I got them from Amazon a long time ago when I was doing some online teaching but um, I'm using hot glue. You probably would wanna use like an E6000 or the Fix-All from Dollar Tree just to make sure the magnets stay attached. I thought one of these little metal lunchbox type tins would be really cute to gift these in. 
And here just to show you on one of the little metal trays from Dollar Tree are all 12 of the images. These are super fun and easy to make. So be on the lookout for calendars, maybe even after the new year starts and you can get them even less expensive. For our third gift DIY, we are going to remake or reuse this Altoid tin, some scrap of paper, one of these Dollar Tree mini calendars, and some adhesive and ribbon. So these you can find at Dollar Tree, and the paper on these is really super thin, but they do give you two to three copies of each month. So that's why you can see I'm flipping through to get one of each month for 2021. And then I'm just gonna measure the um, size of the Altoid tin so I know how big to cut the cardstock that I'm going to glue these months to just to give them a little more stability. I believe I did three and three eighths by like two and five sixteenths or something like that. So you want it to be just a little bit smaller so that they can fit inside the tin. Here I'm using my corner chomper from We Are Memory Keepers just to match the corners of the tin. And I did trim down mm -hmm. each month's mm -hmm. calendar so that um, it could fit on the cardstock. And just using whatever scrapbook adhesive you have, you could even use glue stick for this from Dollar Tree, just centering that month's calendar on each of the pieces of cardstock. So do that for all 12 months. Now I want to dress up my Altoid tin so it doesn't look like an Altoid tin. I'm just using two different designs of scrapbook paper that came together and I also liked these because they had that like teal blue color that is already on the Altoid tin. So just tracing the back, I'm just cutting out this piece of cardstock and then using some double-sided adhesive. We're going to attach that to the bottom of our Altoid tin. So a couple videos ago, I used the red art tape from Dollar Tree if you don't have that. Um, this is called score tape. It's basically the same thing, but it has a paper backing instead of plastic and you just burnish it pretty good and peel off the backing and then it sticks really well to paper or metal. Um, it's great for paper crafting. So stick that down on the back of your Altoid tin. And then I did cut a slightly smaller rectangle for the front and rounded the corners so you could see that teal blue of the tin showing around. Now for the edges, I took some black and white gingham ribbon just because it matched the uh, kind of the theme of the paper. You could use whatever ribbon you wanted. If you don't have ribbon, you could cut a thin strip of scrapbook paper as well to go around and just to dress up that bottom edge of the tin. Now I wanted black numbers for the front and I didn't have any, so I'm taking these white sticker numbers and I'm just painting them with a little bit of black chalk paint. And there you go, I have those stuck down on the front of our little calendar. Next, using some of these clear gems and magnetic buttons from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to make two cute little uh, decorative magnets that will also come with this gift and will be used to display the current month on the front of the tin box for the calendar. So just cutting out those shapes after tracing the uh, marbles, we'll just put some clear glue and glue the paper to the back. And then once that's there, just hot glue a magnet to that as well. You could just use those black magnets if you wanted, and um, this just gives it a little bit more of a decorative touch. So here just showing you how you can use the two magnets to attach the current month 
to the front. So here's how they all can be packaged. And then just showing you how you can take the magnets and display this on a desk with whatever the current month is. And there you go, a cute gift just using a Dollar Tree mini calendar and repurposing an Altoid tin along with a couple other supplies. Our last gift DIY is using four of these wood signs, some wood ornament shapes, more of the magnet buttons, and the letters HME from Walmart. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the three-dimensional um, items from these signs remove the hanger on the back and then I'm going to just separate the frame from the back of the sign. There are some little staples that you may need to pull out with your pliers and then just remove any of that paper that has um, come off and is sticking out around the edges of the frame. Then taking some of our matte finish Mod Podge, I'm just going to apply a layer to the front of all four of my signs. Each one will get this same process. And I'm using some of this scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby. They're four for a dollar. This is whitewashed fence. Spritz it a little bit with my water and then attach that down to the sign. Unfortunately, these um, signs from Dollar Tree are about seven inches square, so you do need one sheet of scrap of paper for each of the four signs. Once that's dry, I'm using my fingertip knife again just to trim away the excess, and we'll use that for another project. And here's all four of the backs of my signs. To put these back together, I'm going to use the super glue gel from Dollar Tree. I like that it's a really fine point tip point and you can just get that right along the edges there and then fit the back of the sign back in place. Here you can get a little bit more of an idea of what I'm doing. I'm going to now take these wooden shapes just representing different holidays and seasons. And if they have an ornament hole, I'm going to fill that in with some of the spackle from Dollar Tree just to make it a uniform shape. Now taking my letters HME, I decided they needed to be darker because of our whitewashed background. So I'm going to give each of them a coat of Waverly chalk paint in Elephant to darken them up. And then to give them some rustic texture, I'm now taking more of a chippy brush and my mineral chalk paint, which is a lighter gray, and just dry brushing some of that on, like I said, just to give it some texture. And then I am going to sand it just a tiny bit. And then now back to our shapes. I just pulled out my acrylic paints, you guys, and just whatever. These were just all in my stash. So I know if I'm thinking about this this year, when new ones come out, um, I can add more to this project. But if you're making this as a gift for someone, you could just you know use what you have or just one for each season maybe to start out with. But I just have a Christmas tree, a pumpkin, an Easter egg, the star I'm actually gonna make as like 4th of July, a flower, the chick, the heart, and the snowflake. So I just took my acrylic paints, like I said, and just gave them all a little mm -hmm. makeover with some acrylic paint. And then I am going to come back in with some of my paint markers just to add a little bit of detailing. This was really fun. This does not take a lot of artistic ability. Um, and I think anyone who you gave this to would really love it because it's something they can display all year long and will just be able to change out as needed for the new season or holiday.
While those were drying, we'll come back to our four square signs and I am gonna go ahead and hot glue the letters to the center of each of their signs. What I like about this is you could put them in a square like this, you could put them in a line horizontally, or you could hang them vertically. But for the O sign, we're just going to glue one of these magnetic buttons to the center of the sign because now what we're going to do with each of our decorations here that we made with the ornaments is we're going to hot glue a magnet to the back of each one so that this could be changed out, like I said, depending on the season or the holiday coming up. I just absolutely love how this turned out. So if you have these square signs, go grab some. This is super fun and easy to make. You can even just paint on the letters if you don't wanna go buy the Walmart letters. But look how easy this is just to change it out. You do wanna make sure you glue your magnets the correct way so that they attract to each other and aren't opposed. But I think this would be an awesome gift. I hope you guys enjoyed these four Christmas gift DIYs that are a little more um, decorative type things that you could even make for yourself if you wanted. Please let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around by hitting that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up.